Hi, I'm Doug McKinley and you're watching Adorama TV. Today we're going to look at how to liven up your images using a hot shoe mounted flash gun. Now there's many techniques you can use with a flash, but for us today, it's going to be fill-in flash. Adorama TV presents Stay Focused with Doug McKinley. Once upon a time, using a shoe mounted flash was a complicated thing. In fact, they really didn't exist until the 1970s. And using flashes at that time, you had to be almost a mathematical genius just to use them. Not so today. Modern flashes are smart, powerful, and versatile. So what I really want to do today is demonstrate with your flash how to put a little snap into portraits of your family and friends in outdoor setting. We don't want to overpower them, we don't want to underpower them. Like Goldilocks, we want it just to be right. Today I'm using a Canon 580EX2 flash gun. The upgrade is a 600EX RT. One of the best things about modern flash guns is they have swivel pivot heads giving you much greater control over the direction of light. Something to keep in mind when you're out looking for your next flash gun. Now flash guns read light through the TTL method, through the lens metering. Basically they read the light coming through the lens barrel into the camera then relay to the flash which then determines how much light you need to illuminate your subject. It's a safe method. It's great for things like event photography when the photographer is standing further back from your subjects. But for things like portrait photography, it's better to be in manual. You've got much greater control and more finesse. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest where you could win some amazing prizes. So why do we need to use flash in the first place? Well, I liken it to a man filling up a hole in the ground by shoveling dirt into it. But instead of dirt, we're using light. We're filling up holes under the eyes, under the nose, under the chin, the shadows. We've all seen those pictures of blacked out faces and overly bright backgrounds, or vice versa. So what we're trying to achieve is balance, and the flash will help us with that. This morning we have Georgia joining us. She's been good enough to stand in as our model. And as you can see, it's a crisp, clear morning. But it doesn't really matter what the weather is like, cloud or sunny, it's always going to present us with a bit of exposure problems, and the flash gun is going to help us solve that. In an outdoor setting, it's usually not good enough to just get the meter reading off your subject. If you ignore the backgrounds, they're gonna be overly bright or overly dark. If that's what you want, that's great. But if you want balance, you need to use a different method. The one I use is effective and easy. The flash is turned to manual, but turned off at this time. I'm using evaluative or center-weighted metering modes. Now, you've gotta place your model in an area that's not overly bright or overly dark. You're looking for a medium. Our next step is to choose our lens. I'm using a 24 to 70 2.8 millimeter zoom lens this morning, just for a little bit of leeway in composition. Think about depth of field. How much of the background do you want focused? How much do you want blurred? Same with the model. Shutter speeds. You need enough shutter speed to avoid camera shake, otherwise you'll get ghosting in the pictures. If you look at the back of the LCD screen, they're probably looking a bit harsh. Next, using the same exposure, bounce the light off a reflector or use something as a kicker light. It can be anything, as simple as an A4 piece of paper attached to the flash head with a rubber band. It's very effective. From here it's about adjustment. If the light from the flash is too much, just dial it down. If the background light is too bright, close the aperture by a stop. If it's too dark, open it up. It's by using these micro adjustments to flash output and background light is where your balance will eventually be found. Getting it right is a matter of experimentation and patience. Thanks for joining us today. And don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV. And tell us what you think. You can like, comment, or share in this video. And do come along to the Adorama Learning Center for more great tips and tricks. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use AdoramaPix.com.